Good evening. My name is uh, Ryan D. Groney. I'm a retired United States Marine Corps Lance Corporal. I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes while serving in the Marine Corps in 1993. Um, for those of you who might not know me and uh, are wondering what, uh, who exactly this jackass is who thinks he uh, has anything to say about anything really, um, as I said, I'm a retired United States Marine Corps Lance Corporal. Um, in addition to that, I hold an Associate of Applied Science degree uh, with distinction from Lincoln School of Commerce. Uh, I work for uh, a barrister Kenneth, Kenneth Cobb as a paralegal. Uh, he fought with General Patton at the Bulge. And um, I've also worked as a paralegal for former Nebraska State Senator John W. DeCamp, a, a hero of the, the Vietnam conflict and one of uh, Nebraska's uh, most influential state senators in, in its history. Uh, I also uh, fought at the Battle of the Phoenix VA and um, uh, I was lost part of my foot in that battle and um, I just uh, wanted to let you all know that for those of you who who don't believe that uh, veterans um, have been fighting and dying um, in, in that battle. Um, for those of you who say it wasn't so, I know I was there and I remember. And uh, the purpose of this video is I, I recently learned that uh, Judge uh, Antonin, Antonin Scalia has passed away at the age of 79. And, um, you know, it's, it's with a heavy heart that, uh, that I learned that news. Uh, Judge Scalia was uh, 79. He was the longest serving associate Supreme Court justice uh, on the court. He was an, a Reagan appointee, appointed in 1986. And uh, Judge Scalia um, was the one of the stalwart conservatives on the court. And, um, and his death is uh, untimely, to say the least. And uh, we all um, mourn his passing. Um, one of the things that uh, I'd like to say about Judge Scalia um, is I, I'd just like to talk a little bit about uh, what his legacy is and, and the legacy that he leaves on this court. Um, Judge Scalia was both a originalist and a textualist. Um, but uh, first, let me first let me read something from Wikipedia about uh, how uh, Judge Scalia, um, how he comported himself, how he uh, how he uh, did his job, um, and and how he uh, performed uh, before the court. Uh, and um, according to uh, Wikipedia, Dal Dalia Lithwick of Slate. Described his technique as follows. Uh, uh, she describes it, quote, As Scalia doesn't come into oral argument, all secretive and sphinx-like, feigning indecision on the nuances of the case before him. He comes in like a medieval knight, girded for battle. He knows what the law is. He knows what the opinion should say. And he uses the hour allocated for argument to bludgeon his brethren into agreement. Um, it's uh, also noted in the Wikipedia article on on Judge Scalia that uh, um, that he was both an originalist and a uh, textualist and just uh, just to give you an idea of, of what that means to me a textualist and, and an originalist is somebody who looks at the Constitution and looks at the law and, and, and uh, and believes that it, it says what it means and it means what it says. Uh, they don't believe that that people can just make make up and to, to give it their whatever meaning to it that they assign to it, but that it's that, that it's the job of the court to to uh, interpret what it means. An originalist will look at the Constitution and uh, uh, interpret it as it would have been understood when it was adopted and a textualist is going to look at a statute and and, uh, and interpret it uh, giving giving it its plain meaning um, this was the 
the philosophy that uh, guided Scalia through his 30 years as a Supreme Court justice. And um, it, it's a, um, unfortunately, it's an increasingly minority view of how uh, our laws should be interpreted uh, by the court. And um, his passing will be, um, he'll be sorely missed uh, because of the intellectual uh, prowess that he brought to the court and his uh, commitment to, to, uh, to a constitutional interpretation of both the law and the Constitution. So I, um, I can't uh, express enough how profoundly grieved I am by, by the passing of Judge Scalia. Um, but we'll, we'll fight until the end. We will, we will fight until the end. And um, to his friends and to his family, I'm, I just uh, would like to express my sincere and um, heartfelt condolences uh, and to the American people as well. Uh, now, it, in addition to his legacy, I, I guess... Um, what a lot of us are going to start uh, looking at going into the future is, uh, you know, wh how, how, what does this mean for the republic, and and how should we react to this, and, and uh, what what do we need to do moving forward? And so, at this time, I'm um, calling on Senator Marco Rubio and Senator Ted Cruz uh, to lead the fight. To see to it that the that the, that the next Supreme Court justice is uh, appointed by a Republican president, and I know that, that that this might mean. I mean, if you look at it, and, and you, if you if you look at it and um, look at the position that you guys are in, and um, look at the lay of the land, so to speak, um, this might mean that both one or both of you might have to to quit the race for president. I know you both want that. I know that um, that you're both uh, both believe that uh, that uh, you can do the job and, and, and that you can do the job better than any of the other candidates in the race and, and I appreciate that and I respect that and um, uh, you've both been um, patriots and and you both fought for this country very hard and I know you feel like you've earned the right to continue on uh, in the president in the race for for the White House and um, I respect that but I would also like you to, to sincerely consider uh, at this point that you um, that you've both been elected to do a job um, as the United States Senator and uh, and I would call on both of you to realize that your country needs you and um, what, whatever your decision should be uh, going forward as far as uh, whether you'll stay in the race uh, for the presidency or not that, that, that you need to give uh, the people that elected you to the office uh, the offices that you currently serve in you need to give them your full uh, faith and effort in executing those offices uh, I don't think right now um, given that we have a lame duck president a president with a history of uh, Quite frankly, usurping the Constitution, um, most notably with his executive orders, but just with his behavior in general over the past seven disastrous years, um, I, I think that given that, um, that uh, it, uh, it's your responsibility to fight to make sure that uh, no Supreme Court, no nominee is given is uh, is selected uh, to fill Judge Scalia's vacancy until the next president has been elected um, and until that we've heard from the people on what direction that they want to continue uh, they, that they want this uh, country to go on uh, moving forward uh, the next nominee is obviously going to have a great influence on that uh, the conservatives um, right now, uh, without Scalia, are have no hold on this co the court. 
Um, obviously, there's going to be a, a great deal of damage done, regardless of, of whether uh, he's replaced before the end of this term. And I believe that the, the damage that could be done, that will be done to, to the country if he's replaced uh, by an uh, Obama nominee will be grave. And so I'm calling on Senator Cruz and Rubio to to quit the race and to quit the race for president and to um, go back to the Senate and 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 stand up for the American people and and for our way of life in the same manner with which they have already um, done uh, up until this point. Uh, I'd also at this point like to um, just call out to Senator McCain and Senator Flake and Senator uh, Fisher and, and Senator Sassy. Um, I don't know how you guys get along together, but I, I do know that you're all Republicans. Um, I recently, uh, I'm recently moved from Arizona back to Nebraska. I don't know whether it's going to be a permanent move or not. So I, I'm calling on on you four because uh, I both uh, hold I hold both of those states to be. Uh, home states to me, and, and I, I feel, um, and I'm proud to be represented uh, by you all and by by four solid Republicans. And I would just ask that you would um, take your task seriously um, in uh, your role to advise and consent the president on his next nominee. Uh, I, I would also add to you that this isn't a time for compromise. Um, this this isn't the time for bipartisanship or or a, any sort of uh, capitulation. Uh, we have to stand strong for the American people at this point and uh, wait until they've spoken to see who they want as president and to see the next direction uh, for the country is going to be. And then we can, and when the new president is inaugurated, then we can. Um, then we can move forward uh, based on, on the direction that they give you. Uh, then we can move forward on the next nominee. So again, um, I would like to um, express my condolences to the Scalia family, to uh, the American people. And um, I just, uh, I hope we all pull through this. Thanks.